<laughs> good morning or good afternoon. I'm pleased to share with you preliminary results of the 2010 Census of Population and Housing. These results are very significant to us in that the data paints a very vivid picture about the social and economic contours of the island. A population census is an exercise of national importance that all countries undertake every five or ten years. And its purpose really is to assess the socio-economic characteristics and the geographical distribution of a country's people. The census provides us with data and information about Bermuda that we can use as a point of reference to determine how our island has changed since the last population census held in the year 2000. Now the 2010 census was launched on May 20th, 2010. And it was on that day when a few hundred census workers were deployed into the community to collect economic, social, environmental, and technological information from roughly 27,000 households in Bermuda. The plan for the release of the 2010 census data has two stages. Today we're releasing the first stage that includes the preliminary results, which focuses on the basic characteristics of Bermuda's population. Its size, its growth, its structure, its race, its age and sex distribution, as well as employment and Bermudian status, as it stood on May 20, 2010. Now that's the first stage. Stage two of the plan includes the release of census data on topical and more complex issues such as child care, education, health, housing, income, and economic activity. And these results will be shared with the general public in December later this year. Now let me now share some of the highlights of the preliminary census findings so that the Bermuda public can begin to make a connection between the individual census information that they provided to the interviewees and the aggregate statistics that are being released. Now there are some technical terms and for consistency you use them so that there is sort of a sort of parity between other um, census data that is collected worldwide and it certainly allows for consistent comparisons to be made over time and with other countries. Now in 2010, Bermuda's civilian non-institutional population that is, all persons normally resident in Bermuda totaled 64,186 persons. And this was 3% higher than the 62,059 persons counted during the 2000 census. Now note that this excludes the 82 non-sheltered or homeless persons and 801 persons who were housed in institutions such as the prisons, the hospitals, and rest homes. Now from the data, it's evident that Bermuda's population is growing at a very slow rate than experienced in the past. But it's definitely in alignment with our expectations, considering that we do have a declining birth rate and a below replacement fertility level. Now, of the total population of 64,186 persons, there were 30,833 males and 33,353 females. Now, although there continue to be more females than males, the proportion of females to males remains the same as in the 2000 census. 92 males for every 100 females. The median age for Bermuda increased from 37 years in 2000 to 41 years. So you see we're getting an aging per population and we're getting older. As you all know, this is reflective of an aging population and it certainly is also consistent with the experience of the developed countries. Now the proportion of our seniors increased from 11% in 2000 to 14% in 2010, or in terms of in physical hard numbers, from 6,722 seniors in 2000 to 8,678 in 2010. Now contrast this with children. 
children under five years old remained at 6% of the total population, and that's also reflective of our continued low fertility rate. Now certainly the government is committed to providing for our seniors because we recognize the steady growth of our elderly population. And in fact, you may recall that earlier this year, the Ministry of Health held an aging um, conference. And really that was to help us craft and develop a national strategic plan to support our seniors. Now the Bermuda labor force, that is those persons 16 years or older, who were either gainfully employed or looking for work, it grew by 5% in 2010 to 37,727 workers. Male workers accounted for 51% of this total, and females made up the remaining 49%. However, the labor force participation rate slipped 1% to 84% in 2010. Now this isn't surprising and it's reflective of the unemployment levels that we've certainly experienced just prior to the start of the census undertaking. Now the 2010 census counted 2,581 persons unemployed with our official unemployment rate standing at about 6% as of census day. That's at May 20th, 2010. Now certainly Bermudians will be aware that government has implemented a number of initiatives to increase the employment opportunities for people. And one of the major items to increase opportunities is the continued effort to develop our workforce by also retraining Bermudians. The number of jobs in our economy still exceeds the number of Bermudians in our workforce and certainly we have to continue to be committed to ensuring that Bermudians become qualified for these jobs. Now one statistic that is an excellent indicator of progress is that since 2000, the amount of new residential units constructed exceeds the increase in our population by some 38%. And it certainly reflects also the collective efforts to seeking to provide housing for Bermuda's people. Now the statistics I've just shared are just highlights of the preliminary census findings and their data results that the Department of Statistics is releasing about the basic characteristics of the Bermuda population. And clearly the participation of the general public during the census data period has certainly positioned us to now assess how the island's socio-economic landscape has developed and changed over the past 10 years. And certainly I am flanked by many from that Department of Statistics and I certainly want to acknowledge them and acknowledge our Director of Statistics because I know it's been an arduous task, it's been a time-consuming task, it has certainly required tremendous patience and there have been some roadblocks but they have overcome those and they have delivered. And I want to certainly encourage everyone to read the preliminary report to understand how the information gathered from everyone helps to develop a better insight into our social, economic, and demographic trends. And certainly it's important that as census part of that process, we count people because people do count. And it's why? Because part of our job as legislators and policy makers is to make informed decisions and you can make informed decisions when you have the information to hand. So our census and the Department of Statistics does a stellar job in providing that information and this is certainly an exercise as you say as I've said that it's done periodically on regular per time frames. So I again would like to certainly personally thank the census field staff for all their hard work and their perseverance over the course of the census field remuneration period. In fact I should say I'm thinking too much about remuneration I should need to think about <laughs> enumeration period. The 2010 census undertaking certainly was a challenging task for the staff at the Department of Statistics. And as I've said, despite the many obstacles encountered during the census operations, they remain steadfast and committed to their plan to deliver sound quality census data. And as a result of their focus, determination, diligence, and steadfastness, we can certainly claim proudly a census coverage of 92%. And I want to again express gratitude to the director and her staff for delivering these preliminary census results in alignment with planned timetables. 
and certainly I want to say that your efforts are all appreciated. We look forward, of course, to later in the year when we have even more detail which we can overlay, which deals with some of the more complex issues. Now, on the um, any questions which are specific and, and require the expertise of the census staff, I'm not flanked to my left for nothing by the director, but certainly I'm also available um, for questions. I'm sure Ms. Valerie James will also assist me when I need it. Ladies and gentlemen. Madam Premier, may I ask you for a coverage of 92 percent, um, which you say you should be proud of, how does that compare with other countries and with what is an acceptable um, total? I think it speaks for itself, but because there may be some other um, detail that the director may wish to add, but certainly what we're saying is that when you look at comparable, jurisdic comparable jurisdictions, 92% is certainly one that we should consider as most acceptable and in fact to be um, something that's noteworthy and something to be proud of. If Madam Director wishes to, she may wish to add to it. If not, that's, that's it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Premier, any ideas to the cost? I don't recall offhand, but I got preliminary. Remember, I had parliamentary questions on that, so it's a matter of public record. We indicated, and we also indicated that because um, when we did the budget session, some of our, our reductions were because we had um, achieved certain efficiencies going forward and that the census is being carried out annually. But as to the actual cost off the top of my head, I can't tell you, but I know that it was provided as part of parliamentary questions. I don't know if Ms. Madam Director wishes to speak to that specifically, but I'm sure we can provide that information easily if you don't want to extract it from the record. There's no one sector that we've had a disappointing return from, like young people, for example, that would be very useful to have had. I don't know, have we? Had any particular, do you want to join me? <laughs> Thank you, Matt. Um, good afternoon. Actually, we had a, a very good spread on the coverage across all the parishes. And so, no, to answer your question, there is no specific sector that's lacking. 